This is part five in my advanced optimization series using the 2014-2015 Science Olympiad Division B rules. I will give a brief summary of what I set out to do with this project and talk about some of the most important things I've learned during the process as well as some general tips. I decided to use the 2014-2015 bridge rules to demonstrate some of my techniques for optimization. The rules that year were very straightforward and the top Division B scores were readily available to compare against. I was able to go from an initial build of 3506 to a highly competitive score of 4533 over the span of about a month and 21 builds. Before considering any of the other tips in this video, it's extremely important that you have mastered the basics. That includes good gluing technique, understanding the materials we're using, and being able to create a library of materials to draw upon during your builds. I highly recommend checking out my other three videos shown here if you are unsure about the basics. The first general optimization tip is to always remember to keep an open mind about your design. There is rarely one correct answer for these devices, and when you are willing to learn from others, that can really speed up your progress. You can find inspiration by researching online, looking at past competitions, and perhaps most importantly by watching others compete during your invitationals. You are not allowed to take pictures or videos of competitors' devices, but you can learn a lot by just observing and taking note of how teams do. With this YouTube channel, I hope to help all teams with providing a good starting point for the current season. Related to the last tip, and equally important, is to not spend too much time optimizing a bad design. If your builds are stuck at a certain score range and you know others are scoring much better, it's time to look at a different design. The templates Science Olympiad generally puts out are okay to get started with, but don't expect them to be competitive, even if built perfectly. Once you have a good design and want to do material optimization, think about your device in terms of functional groups. Make sure every piece of the device is contained in the groups you are considering, and try to understand the purpose of each group in as much detail as possible. And finally, think about how much they are dependent on each other. Keep good notes and document everything. This isn't just important for optimization, but for repeatability as well. The nature of this event usually means your device will break during competition. If you happen to build a great device and can't reproduce it, that doesn't help you at all for future competitions. If you keep great notes, you'll get to the point of being able to select material and know exactly how much your final device will weigh within a couple tenths of a gram before you even build it. That is an extremely useful skill to have. Balsa wood is very flexible. That means as these devices are being loaded to their breaking point, they will often bend and twist in ways that aren't always obvious. While the theory would say that this event involves static loading, the reality is that because of the material deformation, the loading throughout the structure can be very dynamic. Remember the cross bracing test with the identical sides. As the lateral support was reduced, the efficiency dropped as expected, but the failure mode remained the same. This pointed to a twisting effect of the leg causing the onset of the tension detachment, which wouldn't have been obvious from just the end result. My final overall advice is to have fun with this event. Build with other teammates if possible to learn from and to feed off each other's successes. We like to keep a top 10 list posted on the wall to encourage friendly competition and bragging rights. There will be one more part to this series where I'll post the test footage of all 21 bridges, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content.